Hey, we welcome you to Conversations and Coffee this week, this week of February 2021. I'm Ellen O'Shaughnessy, coordinator and planner for the Conversations and Coffee. And just a little reflection before we get started. Did, we, did you notice that Buckeye Chuck did not see his shadow? So we have early spring in competition with Punxsutawney Phil, who saw his shadow and predicted six more weeks of winter. So let's go with Buckeye Chuck. How about it? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm delighted to bring to you today, Jeff Staler, syndicated editorial cartoonist and creator of the nationally syndicated comic panel, Moderately Confused. Isn't that a wonderful title, huh? His cartoons greet us daily in the Columbus Dispatch. And I wanna say um, that your talent for humor is as beautiful as your talent for watercolor. <laughs> and to combine the two is such a gift. Um, I do want to take a minute about your moderately confused cartoon of Christmas Day. I have it right here before me. It was tough having the distance from family. Uh, St. Louis didn't come in, you know, our grandchildren all, we all gathered in the well, we had gift exchange in the middle of the driveway with projected um, <laughs> um, <clears throat> Christmas songs. But what happened for us, my husband and me on Christmas day, was that in your cartoon, Jeff, Santa was on the chimney, okay, with his one leg into the chimney and the gifts behind him for the children. And on the chimney, it says mask required. And you look at Santa and you're not sure because the mask is within his beard, but there it was. So the children got their gifts. And we laughed and thought, there's only one way to do this. And that is through the gift of Jeff Staler's humor. So we thank you all over again. And Jeff, you, um, you have an old flame, you said, watercolor. Is that what you studied at the Columbus College of Art and Design, where you graduated from, and you're now also a board member? Hmm? Tell us about that. I'm a former board, board member of the uh, Columbus okay. College of Art and Design. Um, I, I studied at uh, CCAD as a um, as a um, illustrator and uh, ad advertising. That was my uh, my degree was in advertising. It was a short lived period that I just did not enjoy. <laughs> and I always wanted to find a way to open that door and get into cartooning. Ah, so I did a lot of freelance early on. And um, and uh, did some work for Ohio Magazine, and did there was a magazine back then, back in the early '80s, late '70s, called uh, Living Single. I did a lot of uh, work for them. Uh, back when the Dispatch had a magazine section, I remember their, uh, the paper. Uh -huh. I did some illustration work for them. Columbus Monthly. I did uh, some spot illustration with them. Yeah. And um, later I became an art director with or a, a, a graphic designer with um, Columbus Monthly. And mm -hmm. uh, with Columbus Monthly, I, um, I left there and, and uh, got an offer to um, work with the uh, Columbus Citizen Journal. So I was an editorial cartoonist and an artist for the CJ for their last two years. They mm -hmm. died in 1985. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we moved our family to Cincinnati where I was offered to go on as a editorial cartoonist for 
the Cincinnati Post. I worked for the Cincinnati Post for 20 plus years and um, left the Columbus uh, to come back to um, Columbus and we moved to German Village. I worked for the Dispatch for a period of about seven, maybe eight years as their editorial cartoonist. Um, during that time, I also worked for USA Today and did uh, weekly uh, cartoons for them. We'll ignore that. <laughs> It'll ring for a couple more times. You might be momentarily moderately confused, but I will <laughs> <laughs> but you put us on the right track there. <laughs> those, are, those are our noonday phone calls that we, robocalls that we get every day. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, so yeah. I'm, I'm pretty used to them and don't answer them. <laughs> if they want to leave a message, they leave a message. Good and, way to go. Tell, yeah. us, uh, tell us for a moment here about where humor developed in you. What caused you to see it so readily? Wow. That's a good question. I don't, you know, I've always enjoyed uh, the cartooning aspect of it, and I didn't know how to open that door uh, into cartooning. To, um, but editorial cartooning in 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 itself, uh, I like the irony between in in cartooning, and I still do that to this day. I'm I'm actually working on a. Uh, I still do editorial cartoons that are syndicated. Uh, they're not in the dispatch. The dispatch has changed their pages mm -hmm. quite a few times since I left. And uh, so this is one I was working on. It's only partially done. That um, has the do. It's somebody sitting in their living room with a lot of cardboard characters all around them saying I kind of miss the old Super, Super Bowl parties. <laughs> and so I'm working on that. I'll finish it up this afternoon. And as you draw, did you take drawing at CCAD? And I did. I did. Uh -huh. I took a lot of drawing. I still stay in contact with a lot of old professors that are still here in town that uh, I enjoy uh, being in contact with. Um, Lowell Tolstead, who's a I was a just going to say artist. Lowell Tolstead, yes. Yeah, I took drawing from him. We had him for conversations and coffee, and he, he was just wonderful. Oh, he's a, he's a wonderful person, yeah. And mm -hmm. I, I, I love his, uh, his really tight rendered pencils that he does. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful work. And um, Dennis Drummond. Mm -hmm. is still in town and still yeah. paints. I think he's represented by uh, Art Access. Huh? That's yeah. the area. Uh, let's see, who else is? Uh, Ron Tardino is a, is a huh. friend that uh, joined in. Well, you take it away. And also we want to mention the plein air, <clears throat> how you love to be outside and paint. <clears throat> so... As we I do. move, I do. I yeah. see. I see. Somebody's joined us from the cartooning end of the uh, spectrum, right there, Great. waving Great. to me. Great. That's an artist for Snuffy Smith. <clears throat> so, if any of you have read or remember Snuffy Smith, that's John Rose. Ah, great. That's split up on the panel. Hey, Jeff. How you? Hey, John. Yeah. Good to see you. Hello, John. Good to see hey, you, Jeff. Buddy. <clears throat> Good to see you, man. Yeah. So, uh, I'm Jeff Stahl. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's see now. Move with your work. Ah, great. Ah, okay. Here we go. These are just recent uh, pieces that uh, I've. Uh, uh, I collected from last year just to put together. Most of them are all uh, 2020 cartoons. <clears throat> Wonderful. <laughs> and you can just roll with these as, as needed. Once upon a time, huh? <laughs> yeah. Were these within the dispatch or, or any way we could have seen them? Uh, you can see them on gocomics.com. Oh. 
that's a website that uh, for that carries hundreds of cartoonists um, on there, and I'm one of those hundreds of cartoonists. But uh, that's the easiest way to see uh, the cartoons from Columbus. From Columbus. So tell us a little about this. Uh, let's see. Well, you know, these kind of cartoons are, are wonderful because they're they're wordless. And okay. wordless cartoons are just easily translated. And uh -huh. so this was back when uh, the NCAA was looking at um, uh, how to how to put together football for the fall. Everybody wanted to see football. But there's a, a virus and it, it, it stumbled a lot. And it was like Lucy pulling the ball out from Charlie Brown. That's and wonderful. that was my thought. <laughs> That's a great one. Oh. Uh, this ran uh, sometime during uh, COVID, during uh, probably during a lot of protests. And it's it's pretty self-explanatory, I think. Uh huh. But we love your commentary, even so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I remember this. It was kind of fun to put that together as a stair step of uh, different ideas uh -huh. into one. Yes. Mm -hmm. You can roll on. Another one with um, closer to election time. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I've lost the picture completely on my screen. Oh, I'm sorry. How, how do you, I don't know how to bring that back. I don't either. <laughs> I've got, all I've got now is my desktop um, screensaver. Ah. No. Oh. Sometimes, sometimes another something else flashes on your computer. If you exit out, it'll go back. Exit out what of the? If so, some other page off the internet somehow gets on there, it just X out the page. And yeah, maybe uh, maybe go off and come back on again. Okay, leave, in other words, leave it. Leave and come back. Hmm. Possibly, I don't know. I Unless you do that. actually turned off your video, maybe. There's not. Yeah. There's nothing to work with the whole thing. All I'm seeing is you folks, your pictures, right. but I don't have anything to work with. Oh. You probably have full screen. If you get out of full screen, then you can. Well, Jeff, how about you're telling us about this particular cartoon? It's wonderful. Well, you know, this is, uh, here. this of course is supporting teachers and, uh, and, um, uh, the one thing I could tell you about this that's differently, you know, so I, I take and I draw the, the idea out and then it's, and I do it with ink and a brush. And then I, on my computer, I actually use Photoshop to color the, uh, this one I had a lot of fun and probably had a little bit more time uh, to play with the color because I, I, Yes. I really like this one for all the color that's in it. I really like the colors. Yeah. Uh-huh. It has a lot of uh it shows a lot more vibrancy. We all work with deadlines. So so a deadline will get in the way of actually putting more time into a cartoon than uh cuz the cartoons are done daily and and editorial cartoons are pretty much done Mm. instantaneously. So the one I'm currently working on, which was a Super Bowl cartoon, will be something that I'll probably generate and send off this afternoon for either tomorrow or Saturday's paper. Mm, we'll look forward to it. But it is great to see your cartoons in color. Like <laughs> It is fun. Yeah, I do. And actually, some newspapers do run daily cartoons in color and that's why we color them. Mm -hmm. uh, one paper I can think of right offhand is the Tr Detroit News runs my uh, cartoons and they do run color. Uh, they, 
it's really, it is fun to look at a comics page or an editorial page and see your work pop in color. Yeah. Uh, so this one is done right before uh, like an advent calendar, mm. uh, but this is uh, inauguration. It's uh -huh. coming down to. Wonderful. Uh, Jeff, uh, this is Sarah Ballard. Hey, I just Sarah. wanted to tell you, I'm sort of laughing as each cartoon comes up. It just, you know, I don't know how you get your ideas, but they're really right on. So. Oh, thanks. I appreciate it. Oh. Uh, I usually start the morning reading the newspapers and reading uh, a lot of information. And then I just kind of start right off and uh, write little notes to myself. And within an hour or so, hopefully I've got an idea or two. Uh -uh. Today was a better day than yesterday was. And, you know, some days you only have one idea that's worth stirring the pot with. <laughs> some days, uh, like today, I had three or four good ideas that hopefully I'll be able to ink and put together. And it's wonderful how you can combine your love of watercolor <laughs> with your cartoons in these examples. Oh, well, thanks. Beautiful. Yeah. Have to get yeah. color back into the dispatch, huh? Pardon? Get color back into the dispatch. Yeah, yeah that would be nice. Uh, newspapers are having trouble, so they're you know they're constantly fighting, and um, yeah, I just do my job. That's all we can do. Yeah. I'll I'll leave it to somebody else to sell the work. <laughs> And in the meantime, go out and paint. Huh? Oh, absolutely. If the sun's shining, I love to get outside and paint. Uh-huh. It's the best. Mm. We'll be seeing mm -hmm. examples of your watercolor, right? Yes. Yes. Oops, what's that noise? That was. The pipes. <laughs> There's another wordless cartoon that I, I really like. <laughs> I hear some laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> it doesn't take a lot, you know, and sometimes it's just that simple, something simple that all you need is that gesture to make a cartoon work. Oh, that's wonderful. And then sometimes you have trouble and they have lots and lots of words. I have a very good editor that I work with <laughs> out of... Uh, my syndication's out of Kansas City, and I work with an editor there that uh, he's very good at honing down words for me. <clears throat> he's also about 10 years younger than I am, so he also hits another generation that uh, he can take and say, maybe it's better to say this than that. Mm. Not changing the direction of the cartoon so much, as um as just and he's a good sounding board too uh-huh uh-huh it's good to have a helping hand yeah great here it's kind of a wordless cartoon in the sense that uh you no nobody's saying anything but you're walking into a once all these statues were coming down uh-huh I just figured they're moving them someplace. Here's yeah. where they're moving them to. Mm. Mm. And here again, I can use the gestures of these bodies that I love to put into watercolors now. Uh, you know, I can, uh -huh. they're basically just the same way in cartoons. Mm. Uh, that's the uh, the former um, yes uh, the um, press secretary mm -hmm. uh, McElhinney, yeah. hmm. who I would watch almost every day whenever she would be on. Uh, I I I watch C-SPAN a lot, so I'm I'm a pretty boring person in that sense. <laughs> I'll sit in ink and, and, and have C-SPAN playing in back of me. 
<laughs> but it inspires me to Fauci. Trump. Trump was just a fun caricature to draw. I, you know, I haven't drawn a lot of Biden yet. Um, I assume I will. Um, but Trump just always wanted to be in the news and be out front and be spoken about. Uh -huh. uh, whether it was good or bad, it seemed like. And um, so he was, uh, subject matter was very easy to come up with. Uh-huh. That blue coat. <laughs> <laughs> Man, he's always he's so fashion conscious. <laughs> he kind of looks like an elephant or something, you know. Yes. Yeah. Just yeah, he's a big guy. Yeah. So these are moderately confused cartoons. And again, uh, this collection, I think, is pretty much all 2020 cartoons done uh, moderately confused. So these are designed for the comics pages. Um, my workload is I work about one month ahead of time on these. So right now I'm working on, uh, I just sent off a batch yesterday and I think it's the first week in March. Mm -hmm. So I'm starting to warm up a little bit in my idea thinking. I'm not probably working a lot of snow cartoons in right now, but I did that last month, the month before. Mm -hmm. And the Christmas season is just a great time to do cartoons anyhow. I love going cartoons. Mm -hmm. John, how far ahead do you work on yours? I'm about six weeks ahead on the dailies and about nine on the Sunday. Nine, nine Sundays ahead? Nine on, nine on the Sundays. Wow, that's, that's good. John, if you didn't hear me tell earlier, John does the uh, Snuffy Smith cartoon. And has done it for how many years, John? Um, I started in uh, 1998. 1998. So. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> so he's the, now he's the third generation of cartoonists for, is that right? Or yes, is that's that, right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Must be hard to anticipate the news that far. It's changes so fast. Mm. Uh, that's, you know, so you don't do the news so much in, uh, in moderately confused. I, I think I eked in and probably got, criticized many times for putting Trump into moderately confused. But, you know, they were like spillover ideas that I had that I just couldn't do as an editorial cartoon and, mm. and I could do as uh, moderately confused. Mm. Um, here, certainly I'm using uh, COVID and um, trying to find humor in uh, the way we're communicating. Mm. So I'm up, this cartoon here is updating the, obviously the Christmas Carol. Yes, love it. Uh -huh. It was one of my favorites. Yeah. <laughs> hey and, Jeff. As, as, yeah. This one. <laughs> um, I remember several years ago, I got a moderately confused book of yours. Is there any talk of doing another moderately confused book, or it's? Um, I think it'd be a great collection. Well, thanks. I'll, I'll let you do that for me. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember the moment I when you... the, there's no, I I do not like putting together books. I've done I've done a couple books, and I yeah. actually have the the one is right here. Right, that's Modern, the one. Twenty first century moderately confused, and yeah, that's, that's the one I... probably a dozen years old at least. Do you remember the moment when you came up with the title, Moderately Confused? Uh, sure. Uh, people used to say, before I actually got into it, when I was just doing editorial cartooning, people would always ask where I stand, because I'm kind of <laughs> conservative in some areas, but liberal in others. 
And so I would tell people I'm moderately confused and that just kind of stuck. And then I thought, well, that would be a fun. Moderately confused is actually uh, grandfathered in. I took over an existing cartoonist panel and it was not called moderately confused. It was called Barry's World. And, and maybe you remember Barry's World. It continued until the, uh, until 2002, maybe. And then I've, I've been doing it ever since. They called me uh, like a month. Uh, the, the cartoonist, uh, Jim Barry, uh, who did the same size panel, had mm -hmm. enough clients that the syndicate didn't want to lose that client list. So they asked me, they knew that I like to do social commentary. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Moderately Confused became more of social commentary. I have no running characters in them. I just... Yeah. yeah. We did. Well, we will, yeah. I'll be back. So this is another cartoon about the mask. About huh? the mask. <laughs> Santa remembered his, but this character, uh-uh. <laughs> That's great. Oh, it's wonderful. You can move on to the next one. Yeah. Another COVID. I think most of these are COVID cartoons because it was so easy to do them. Yeah. We were all adapting to this new strange way of living that we've never experienced before. Now on Moderately Confused, I, I've just set up a template years ago for the syndicate and they color it. So I only just do the black and white inking, ah. the drawing and the placement of it in the, in the panel. And then they color it for me. Hmm. Ah. Uh, hence the, uh, if you notice that ladies, uh, I just noticed that here that <laughs> her, it doesn't go all the way down her coat doesn't go all the way to the bottom. To the she's table. kind of floating. She's kind of floating behind that table. <laughs> Adding to the humor of it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Another uh, COVID uh, back to school. No. Oh. <laughs> the oh, old days when you had to walk three miles. To, in Good old days. <laughs> yeah. There he is with a little Lysol. Thing to take to his teacher and a mask and gloves. Mm. Mm. This was early on, and this was an April cartoon, so we're just adapting to all these changes now. Yeah. Uh, probably if I was to redo that same gag, I would have put masks on the people, but here mask wearing in April was kind of, they wanted us to do it. Yeah. But of course, I, being also, you have to think, even though it's, it says it was, it was produced in April, oh. April 1st, I did it even a month before or more. So it's probably done the end of February, just when we we're all, what, what's this all about? Yeah, they were saying don't don't get masks because they wanted those for the healthcare workers. Oh, that, yeah. yeah, I think you're right, Barb. That's right. Uh -huh. <clears throat> wow. Here we are, just a shifting of jobs. I and remember a, that a new one. job, and so he's going to relocate to the <laughs> upstairs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And it was kind of fun to draw a staircase too. <laughs> the turns. That's a good one. You have to you have to adapt it to where you're going to put that balloon in the cartoon. So I had to make a turn. Oh, that's good. That's good. <laughs> There's a lot of art that you think of when you're doing this, and you don't think of it. it just comes naturally that you have to. Uh, 
you know, like shadows, like here, a lot of strong shadows in this. Uh -huh. But, um, and if I was probably coloring it, I would have faded those trees out, but it was fall. So it's a, it's a late September cartoon, uh, right about the time that people were voting. Mm. And uh, it certainly was a, a nasty time. Walking through a beautiful path or a park, and the perspective of walking down at the sun. Oh, oh that's interesting. Yeah, well, you know, you're right. Uh huh. Hmm. You know, you're constantly coming up with new ways to say the same thing over and over and over again. And so that's, that's the challenge that I think cartoonists or columnists uh, have, to, have to do day in, day out. And here I was taking something that, uh, you know, when we buy a new car, we look for those new features in a car. And here I'm just kind of thinking, <clears throat> it was done in the last summer, so here, you know, a mask holder and, uh -huh. and sanitizer holder and <laughs> mm. coming yeah. standard with the car. Yes. And I think more and more of those things are gonna, we're going to be, it's, it's ingrained in us now mm -hmm. that I think more and more of us will become, mask wearing will become more, more of a natural thing. Uh, cleaning and washing hands and keeping sanitized will become more of a natural thing, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here, <laughs> just a simple, yeah, simple idea, but. <laughs> Well, you do keep us laughing every day. Bob and I, my <laughs> husband and I, look for that cartoon in the upper right-hand corner <laughs> of the dispatch. It's wonderful. <laughs> right next to the Sudoku puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> it's usually folded under. Yes, yes. I that. Generational difference. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> it's so it's so much fun to be able to say it in there. I was able to do use four words and make it make it work. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah that, that would take a while, huh? To find that humor in four words. Yeah, it does. You're right. Uh huh. That's beautiful. Nope, here comes watercolors. Hmm. Ah. So this is across the street from me. So I can, I've done so many. I've done a lot this year of, of, of sledding, uh, painting. Beautiful. They're really fun to do. It's, it's so much fun to see people actually out having fun. And uh, during a time that we're all closed inside. Mm. Mm. Beautiful. It is. And you said you come to your door and look out? Oh, yeah. Look out right out the front window or the front, front door. Oh. And it's right across the street. And so I've, I've, that's become an easy subject matter for me. And uh, I actually got a couple new brushes and, and I've started uh, using those brushes. I have one. I don't know if you can see this brush or not. This brush is so thin. And it has like about an inch long, mm -hmm. maybe an inch and a half long brush onto this handle. So when I lay it down and, and paint with it, you can get those really thin little swiping lines that look like the, uh, another artist uses it for, uh, he uses it in the scrub of the brush and bushes and stuff like that in the foreground. Mm. It's just so uh -huh. easy to use. It's just a tiny little brush, but it has an inch and a half. So it, there's no support. It just like flops. <laughs> so much movement in the painting. You can feel them going down 
the hill <laughs> sliding, huh? It's beautiful. Honey figures are so perfect. I don't know how you do those on watercolor. You must you must do pretty dry watercolor for those after you. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's a, that one has a little bit of wash in it. It looks like too, so it stiffens it up. It it, it um, that bright blue, light blue, is definitely a, a gouache in there. Hmm. That but one? the white is all the white of the paper. Hmm. I, I have a question. Is, yeah. Do you capture all that movement by just observing, or do you um, take any photos to, to try to see what someone might look like coming down the hill? Uh, well, I'm I'm seeing it all live. So obviously the 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 figures are are sort of, I capture it in my mind real quick. I do take some photos just, just for, but I, I don't know that I use them for reference. I, I've, uh, mm. obviously this picture right here, all that didn't happen at one time. Uh -huh. And there's another one coming up, another uh, watercolor where I put a foreground figure in just at the last moment. And it just helped that painting so much more. And I saw this guy walking up with his sled, and I just had to, I just got him r real quick. Yeah. And this out of your window? Out of your, you were not outside when you did this? Well, no, I could be. I, I have a little front porch that I could, but it was probably, uh, it was cold out. Hmm. And I'm working watercolors. So you it have qualifies to you for plein air, right? Standing at the well, door. <laughs> yeah, I was sitting in the right, this one I might have been sitting right in my front foyer. Uh, another one I can look out the front window of the house and just see it all. Wow. Oh, amazing. So you're going to see several that, that oh. look the same. Oh. So that one, that one's one of my favorite ones. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's kind of like the end of the day. You know, actually, the sun is down and it's 10 o'clock at night and we can still hear sledders outside yeah. sled riding. You can hear them laughing and screaming and you know they're sled riding over there in the dark. <laughs> mm. so there's oh, that little brush again that you see in that piece. In the foreground. Well, somebody's going to be in the Sharon Weiss gallery. You're going to be uh, yes, uh, there are uh, at least two, maybe three uh, sled riding uh, paintings over there right now. Oh, great. This, this one is not. This one I'm kind of saving for uh, a competition. Mm. How large is it? it? It's larger than I typically, that's almost a quarter sheet. That's, that's big for me, which is... Uh, a quarter sheet is maybe 11, a little bit bigger than 11 by 14, but that's about the size. Yeah. Oh, oh I had a question. Yeah. Um, so do you think doing your political cartoons or your daily cartoons, did that help you keep your sanity as far as, <laughs> you know, just making fun of these things? It keeps me busy and I enjoy doing it. So the breakup between the cartooning and the watercolors are just, you know, I, I like doing them both. And, um, you know, I, I still haven't figured out, do I like one more than the other? I, I enjoy them both. And, and I, I enjoy my mornings to come upstairs and to work on ideas. And sometimes that'll take me until mid afternoon um, but, um, but if somebody wants to come in and paint and calls me up and says, let's go paint and it's a sunny day and they have an idea where they want to paint, I'm, I'm, I have my backpack literally <laughs> right next to me, ready to walk out the door. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is, uh, this is Morrison, um, uh, Colorado. Uh, mm -hmm. This is uh, if you if you went followed that path up the mountain and a little bit to the right, 
you'd be at Red Rocks where a lot of concerts are and it's a very beautiful area. This little town is just a beautiful little town that's set, nestled into these mountains. And I just think it's a beautiful little setting. And I've done, so. Uh, this one I did this past year, uh, might've done it, um, the last time I was out there was the end of October. We were out there the midsummer, and then we went back out in October. We have family out there, so that's that's what gets me out there too. Beautiful. So that's Morrison, Colorado. Hmm. When you have your exhibit in the faculty club in May, yes, are you going to uh, have a number of these in? I hope. <laughs> I'm, I'm always kind of thinking ahead and working on these. Uh -huh. Actually, right now there's a music venue here in town that I'm blowing up a lot of, I did musicians for a couple, mm -hmm. last couple of years and I haven't done too many recently because I would do them live. And, uh, and, and uh, this is Natalie's uh, Coal Fire Pizza, which oh, has a lot of good music venues. And they've moved to uh, Grandview mm -hmm. as a second location. And so right now we're framing up uh, half a dozen different, uh, and we've blown them up to poster size. So they look really cool blown up big. It's kind of fun. So we're going to hang those uh, probably in the next few weeks. They hope to reopen their uh, music venue sometime maybe in March. So oh, that's great. They're crossing their fingers and they can reopen. Uh -huh. Hopeful, huh? Those, uh, a lot of those uh, you can see on my website too, on the uh, jeffstoller.com mm -hmm. website. These are both uh, just early inspirational little um, watercolors. The one on the left is a bigger one. The one on the right is pretty small. It's, it's only a couple inches big. But the one on the left is a little bit bigger and a little bit different. And, uh, and it was composed from photos, more than one. But I wanted to get that downward motion and then people right. working their way back up the hillside. And this is not, uh, the one on the left is not uh, across the street. It's another, um, it's another um, nearby sledding hill. And German village around Schiller Park, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Did you say you use gouache sometimes or did I mishear you? You're no, I, I do sometimes. Uh, it, I don't because, because if I want to enter anything in the central Ohio watercolor, they are very strict about not having, being strict transparent watercolor society. Mm. And so I, I can't enter anything I've done in gouache with them, but the Ohio Watercolor Society, I could enter in that or other exhibitions, the plein air exhibitions I could, I could enter. Ah. How does gouache help your, your paintings? Uh, they give you a little bit more depth and I can get a, if I need to use white. Mm. Uh, typically, I don't think the one on the right has no, that's the white of the paper. And also the one on the left, I, I can't, I don't remember now. That, that one's nearby. I forget where that one is. It's in the, it's up here in the studio someplace. It might be right here. No. Here's one you don't have on there. This is, I don't know if you can see that or not. I did that just a few, just a couple weeks ago. Oh. We had a big snow. Yeah. And that's uh, near, nearby. It's about a block from the house. Oh. Hmm. Wow, it's beautiful. The nice snowy uh, scene there. Mm -hmm. And I was able to get most of it done on location and then just finished it 
here and that's only about what six by maybe 14 inches something like that you have such a natural way for perspective oh, does, that, does that just come so easily for you uh, it, it does now but you know i i admire uh I've painted with a lot of people that are formerly architects and, mm. and, uh, and those people are just amazing how they can find that perspective and work that perspective. Um, I try to do it in a more artistic way, I guess, without drawing the verticals and all the lines that make that go yeah. back in the depth or come forward. Uh, I think what helps in in perspective sometimes is also adding a human element into it. Mm. Mm. That's great. Mm -hmm. Hey Jeff. Yeah. I know you do what about six do about six moderately confused a week and about four or five editorials. And uh, then, I'm contracted. So you set a goal for how many I, I do th only, I'm contracted for three editorials. I some, you know, with okay. with Trump, it was easy to do four, maybe five. <laughs> so I would right. do it. And, you know, I do it only <laughs> so I can satisfy newspapers or um, um, keep me doing this. It just, it's just fun to do. But I'm only contracted right. to do three a week uh, editorials. I have to do six a week. So a total of nine cartoons a week is what I typically try to do. That's wow. a lot. And then is if I can get that done before Friday, painting? I can go out and paint on Friday. <laughs> do one or two a day then? You try to get <laughs> one or two a day? I do. That's, that's kind of a goal every day to get, have one or two good ideas. It's, it's been a tougher week for me, <laughs> just to be honest. Uh, today was a better day. Oh, good. I, I, I and you're sharing it with us. How wonderful. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and and I, Jeannie is around. Is she going to come forward here and be you, with us for a can moment? You the, uh, can you show some of the uh, art? Yeah, she, she can show the studio. Show up. Whoops. And Jeff, how does she inspire you with humor? <laughs> Well, a lot of people see, we don't discuss the cartoons too often, uh -huh. but a lot of people will say, is that Jeannie in a piece? And she does inspire a lot of, uh, a lot uh -huh. of uh, things up here. She's, she's walking around the studio now showing video, good. <laughs> video of, uh, of, uh, that's Jay behind you there. Yes. Yeah. It looks like a mess, doesn't it? Look at that. Oh, my oh, God. No, it looks like lots of wonderful things are happening. Yeah. I know where everything is. There's uh -huh. a nice little. Oh, cute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. John knows Ron, too. Yeah. Great. So I'm on the third floor of our home. And that's the that's my studio space is the uh, third floor. Uh huh. Well, that gives you a lot of physical exercise. I can up out there. on if I get too tired. <laughs> take take them over to show them the, the, the cartoons on the wall, and then I have a lot of inspiration up here too. Uh huh. John, yours is downstairs in the main part of the house. John has a snuffy <laughs> oh, Smith nice. hanging downstairs. There's a there's a, an old gasoline. I, I, nice, nice. I have two of your editorial cartoons down in my studio. <laughs> one about Tiger Woods, and then one from forged up about George W. Bush. Oh my yeah. gosh! Oh good. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> I don't know if you can read those. Those are under glass, but only a few of my, I don't hang too many of my own up here. <laughs> they're hang, they're, they're in stacks. <laughs> yeah, Jeannie will show you the stacks of cartoons and the boxes of cartoons. 
over here. Oh, okay. Well, you belong to a number of groups. A number of the, the watercolors. Yeah, these are these, these are just boxes filled with cartoons and stacks and stacks of cartoons. Yeah. So I literally have I don't know thousands. Yeah, and I donate a lot to the Ohio State uh, University to their. They have a wonderful cartoon research library where a lot of the cartoons go to. Mm -hmm. But when you when you sell them to newspapers or wherever, you, they don't need the actual paper. They're just electronically, right? So you have exactly. all the actual exactly. originals at home. You keep them yeah. all. Yeah. Um, they're good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's show them that stack right over there. Oh, more cartoons. More cartoons. And then those little ones down below. Inspiration. And all, all kinds of all kinds of inspiration. Yeah, so you were a caricature somebody drew of me <laughs> <laughs> from a long time ago. There's an old funky winker bean. Oh, yeah. Huh? And a medic. Uh, I love that medic cartoon. But it's sideways. It's hard to read. Small book collection there. And watercolors there. My bin of watercolors. Huh. So you retain all the rights to the ones you save, or, or does the new newspaper have any rights, or what? Uh, I don't know what the rights are anymore. They used to be a lot stricter. Uh, there used to be a time that, uh, before my time, I would hear other cartoonists, older cartoonists, talk about uh, how they never had rights to own any of theirs. And I guess there are still are cartoonists that... Uh, the Dennis the Menace people, they they have trouble. They don't own anything, do they, John? You You're know? Right. right. Yeah. They can't they I don't, don't own their own art. Huh. No, no, they don't. It all goes to the uh Dennis the Menace, the original um Hank Ketchum died several years ago, and his widow is still alive, I think. And mm -hmm. um and the sun, sun works on it, but then there are two other artists that work on Dennis the Menace. One just does the Sunday, and another one does the dailies. Hmm. I'm the only one that works on Moderately Confused. <laughs> John is the only one that works on uh, Snuffy Smith. <laughs> Great. Right. I know your daughter's helping, right? He helped me color one, one week. <laughs> um, recently, just to try to uh, help me with the colors for a week. That was kind of fun. And then, yeah, it's just her? me otherwise. You fired her afterwards? <laughs> What's that? Did you <laughs> fire her? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, she just came in to help for a week, and I might have her do it again later this year for another week. <laughs> yeah. Well, John, you bring your daughter with you and we'll have a conversation some coffee. Oh, okay. I can do that sometime. <laughs> yeah, John's oh. in... Uh, I'm in Virginia. Virginia. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, we can be anywhere, right? By virtue <laughs> of living virtually. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yes. Huh. So your daughter's an artist, too. Yes, she a graphic is. artist, oh, really? watercolors to paint. Yeah, she is. This is one I did. I I didn't know if that was going to pop up or not. This is another one I just did this week. Oh, that's but this one I really liked because I added this figure at the last moment, mm -hmm. just to kind of force that look going up the hill and then coming down the hill. Uh huh. And I thought I thought it worked pretty well. Mm -hmm. So that was just done on a pad. Wonderful. I do have two more that we didn't get to. Can we oh, just... okay. Okay. Light them up there. Oh, there. Yeah, that's yeah. another. That one, I love the tree. The tree just that was. And that's, oh, a little, that's that, that wonderful perspective again. I love it. That was I'm a very gonna... bright, sunny day. Yes. Oh. Look at the sun. The... Magnificent. 
Yeah. You like blue. You like blue, don't you? Yeah, I do. I guess I do. Yeah, I just I noticed how many yeah, ways yeah, that, and how creative you are about blue. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, here I'll show you a couple of the musicians that I've done. So I've done this is uh this is one I've done of uh Yorma Kalkadin who was originally with the uh, Jefferson Airplane and then uh, is currently playing with uh, Hot Tuna. He's been there for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I've done several paintings of, of him. He lives in uh, Ath south of Athens, Ohio. Mm -hmm. Another, uh, this is uh, one of Richie Ferre, who used to be with uh, Buffalo Springfield and Poco. And uh -huh. both of these artists, both played, musicians played at uh, Natalie's, and that's kind of where I yeah. get these from. And yeah, I, I like blue in this one a lot. <laughs> yes, it's magnificent. This is one of, uh, that's a local, uh, that's a local uh, musician, uh, Tom Carroll, and um, mm -hmm. and his quartet. Wonderful. I don't know what else you had on the uh, Lindsay. Did you have anything else? That was the last what? one that I just had. That was, that was okay, Lindsay, and we thank you. That was wonderful, don't you think, Jeff? How she brought forward just oh, yeah, absolutely technological talent there having just graduated from otterbein university yes we thank, thank you thanks lindsay yes uh-huh how many and, pictures did you show lindsay did you did he send you i think there were 29 or 30 because there was two on that one slide yeah and again we want to thank andy stout <laughs> who is the columbus television station manager who makes it possible that these wonderful experiences, as with Jeff Staler today, get on YouTube. And so between Lindsay and Andy, uh, this is possible, but this good news continues, huh? So we thank yeah. you. And in two weeks, um, we had for a moment, uh, Inga Smith, but I guess her technological challenge there got her off. Oh, there she is. Yeah. Look good. You see her? Yeah. yeah, I see her waving. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Well, Inga, we know you're going to be with us in two weeks, February 18th. And as she said, I'm presenting my favorites, whimsicals, and lucky shots. She's a photographer. So do join us huh, in two weeks. And Jeff, this has been wonderful being with you. Thank you. Thank you. And we Good will continue everybody. be moderately confused. Not confused, but moderately Moderate. confused. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Good to see everybody. Yeah. Thanks for coming, John. Huh. Great. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thank Tell you. Jeannie I said hi. Yep. She's right here. Yeah, Jeannie. Thank you, Jeannie.